Hey, this is Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about some key variables that got my bench from beginner to intermediate level. Now, I know a lot of the videos that we talk about, they, they seem too advanced for some people, but I'm going to give you some key tips on what got my bench from 250 to 350. So let's have at it. <laughs> So, I'm a freshman in high school. I had just benched 250 in my 8th grade to ninth grade year going into, going into high school, which is an amazing bench press. Don't get me wrong. Keep in mind that I'd already been lifting for close to three years by that time, so 250 bench wasn't a big deal. Now, freshman year, I get there, and I want to I wanna hit in the threes, right? But what I started to notice was is that the training that got me from the mid-twos to the mid-threes was the fact that by default, I didn't really know what I was doing, was that I got my back insanely strong. Now, what does this mean? That means that a lot of the guys that I trained with at the Y, they wouldn't let me bench press over 300 pounds until I could do pull-ups. Now, how many of us know, like especially bigger guys that we might have friends or maybe we're one ourselves that want to bench press all the time, but we can't even come close to doing a push-up or a pull-up. Now, that is a huge problem because what you have to start realizing is that the bench press is all about being able to stabilize small muscle groups. Now, what does that mean? Well, if we look at the joint structure of the shoulder and the upper body, it's really designed for fine-tuned motor patterns. It's not really designed for maximal strength, okay? So the big problem is, is that you have to be able to stabilize weights in order to press them. And I think that's a huge proponent or missing proponent for a lot of people that train today. So what does that mean? That means if you want to be strong in the front, you need to be strong in the back. And we talk about this in a lot of different videos, right? We want to do two times the back work as front work. Now, I was doing that because the coaches I had at the time were forcing me to. They were like, if you want to bench press over 300 pounds, you need to be able to do a pull-up. So I'm practicing doing dumbbell rows. I'm doing pull-ups. We have a machine that takes some of the body weight off. And I would say in about eight or nine months of starting to really focus on my back, I was able to do a pull-up, and then they let me go free on the bench. Now, what is all the purpose to this information? Well, the purpose is this. When I finally broke into the 300s on the bench press, I had no problem stabilizing the weight. Meaning when I took the weight out and locked it in, my bar path was straighter, my shoulders were locked in, and I wasn't creating near as much shoulder pain or any kind of joint pain. Why? Because I could put that 300 pounds exactly where I wanted it to go versus it kind of making me go where it wants to go. How you do that is developing the backside of the body. So one of the biggest tips I can give you guys from a beginning level is train the opposite side of those muscle groups as hard as you possibly can in order to see the results of the anterior group. So if you want a strong bench, you need a strong back. And it's not because the back necessarily does the work, it stabilizes the work. All of those muscles in the scapula need stabilization in order for the shoulder to push at maximum. Okay, That also starts to include length of time as far as how fast it's going to be to get strong. So we have motor patterns, okay? We have two different types, and there's probably more than that, but this is to say for simplistic sakes that we just talk about these two types. We have a motor pattern that tells the brain, the brain tells the muscle to move, but then we also have a motor pattern that the muscle tells the brain what it's doing, how much tension is at, you know, all these other feedback factors. Well, if the shoulder or the upper body in and of itself has a feedback mechanism, that starts to tell you that it's not stable enough to do the exercise or it could be dangerous, the body is going to govern those lifts down and make you not as strong as you possibly could be. So what I'm getting at is that, guys, when you're beginners and intermediate lifters, you are anywhere from 20 to 50 pounds stronger than you are right now. But the reason that you can't see it is because you don't have those muscles stabilized and balanced. And remember that everything is about checks and balances when you're lifting weights. You're always trying to tell the body that it's okay to push harder because everything is balanced. And trust me, when you find those weak points and you fix them, you're going to get stronger without actually doing the actual lift. It's funny because I felt some of the same things with the deadlift, right? When I was a 500-pound deadlifter working to a 600-pound deadlifter, my hamstrings needed a lot of work. I was already very quad dominant from racing BMX bicycles and, and things of that nature. So my hamstring needed to play catch-up. And what I found was, is that if I did a lot of hamstrings with my deadlifts, my deadlifts went up and got easier without actually deadlifting more. Now that sounds crazy, but it's true. So the point is, if you want your bench press or your deadlift or your squat to go up, 
know where your weaknesses are, focus on those areas. A lot of times there'll be stabilization muscles and that will help you make progress without actually having to do more insanely hard work. What I mean is that you might not just need to be doing more sets of bench press or squats or deadlifts. You may need to just be doing more accessory work based on your weaknesses. Now, knowing where your weaknesses are and how much to train them, that is a very professional question. It's hard and different for everyone depending on age, injuries, and equipment available. So if you have questions on any of these areas, please contact us on online coaching or at the bare minimum, go on the website and download the manuals and get some better ideas on how to train. We'll talk to you guys later and hope to see you soon.